from the nation I'll talk, no walk. Donald Trump is claiming, for the moment, that he is on exceptionally good terms with congressional Republicans even with some of the Republicans that his once and future chief strategist Steve Bannon has targeted for political extinction. Indeed, the president declared in his shambolic attempt at a press conference Monday, maybe, with the exception of a few and that is a very small few I have a fantastic relationship with the people in the Senate and with the people in Congress. This is a demonstrably untrue statement. Most Republicans in Congress did not back Trump when he was bidding for the party's nomination in 2015 and early 2016. Many steered clear of him even after he was confirmed as the party's candidate. And now a rotating cast of characters in the Senate Republican caucus continues to trip up what passes for a Trump agenda. Trump's relationship with Senate Republicans is not just chaotic. It's dysfunctional. That produces plenty of fodder for commentary, but not much else. And that's the problem. Trump is a childman president who blames everyone else for his foibles. But those who criticize Trump are, for the most part, equally immature. They make grand pronouncements and garner a good deal of media coverage for it. But they do not take tangible, let alone meaningful, steps to hold this president to account. Sure, a John McCain may jab at the president's spurious nationalism, as the Arizona Republican did with his Liberty Medal speech on Monday. And a Susan Collins may suggest that she is staying in the Senate to check and balance Trump, as the main Republican did last week. Some of these dissenting members may even vote against a Trump Act proposal, as both McCain and Collins have on the vital issue of health care. But Trump's Republican critics and, to be frank, a number of his Democratic detractors are not putting the brakes on this presidency. The decision by Senator Foreign Relations Committee Chairman Bob Corker to acknowledge the fact that Trump poses a clear and present danger to the United States and the world offers an example of how the president's critics fail themselves and their country. Corker's objection of Trump is more than just a political story. While television talking heads obsess about the fallout in the Senate and the impact that the Tennessee Republicans' sudden frankness will have on the 2018 election Americans have every reason to be unsettled by the prospect that Trump's threatening tweets and bombastic pronouncements could put the United States on the path to World War III. Corker, a conservative Republican with a hawkish record and a history of enabling rather than challenging this president, is telling them that it is appropriate to fret. He concerns me, the senior Republican says of Trump. He would have to concern anyone who cares about our nation. While he was slow to speak up, recent developments explain why even those who were once Trump apologists are starting to worry. When the president addressed the United Nations last month, he squandered an opportunity to calm fears about his instability by telling the chamber that the United States would, if provoked, obliterate a country of 25 million people. The United States has great strength and patience, Trump said during his first address to the General Assembly. But if it is forced to defend itself or its allies, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Key phrase totally destroy. So let's accept that Corker is correct in his concern. But being correct is not enough. The senator needs to do more than simply issue warnings about a president who is in need of adult daycare. He has a duty to join the members of Congress who are seeking to place limits on Trump's ability to steer the world toward a planet obliterating World War III. Earlier this year, Congressman Ted Lieu DCA and Senator Ed Markey DMA introduced House and Senate versions of their Restricting First Use of Nuclear Weapons Act of 2017. It is a frightening reality that the U.S. now has a commander-in-chief who has demonstrated ignorance of the nuclear triad, stated his desire to be unpredictable with nuclear weapons, and as president-elect was making sweeping statements about U.S. nuclear policy over Twitter, observed Lou, who has emerged as one of the most serious advocates for congressional action to restrain Trump. Next page 1 2 John Nichols, a pioneering political blogger, has written the online beat since 1999. His posts have been circulated internationally, quoted in numerous books and mentioned in debates on the floor of Congress. Nichols writes about more. The views expressed in this article are the sole responsibility of the author and do not necessarily reflect those of this website or its editors. Want to post your own comment on this article?